Hi and welcome to Tales from the Hut and Hangar, Aviation Rarities episode about the proposed but never built Shorts 450. Maybe the 450 could have been the ultimate shed. Was it a missed opportunity? Before we go into the story of the 450, here is a bit of background about its evolution from the Short Skyvan 330 and Sherpa and 360. All these aircraft have collectively and affectionately in the UK been nicknamed the Shed. They do have many other nicknames, mind. My favourite for the Skyvan is the Whispering Nissan Hut. Some say they looked ugly, I don't agree. Their function dictated their looks. They were reliable, sturdy and they had low running costs, easy to maintain and very versatile. And the pilots loved flying them. Passengers, however, once they got over their basic looks, accepted them and enjoyed their spacious cabins. The only thing was they were not pressurised, but this was not needed for their targeted market. Great aircraft for short passenger sectors and all ideal for cargo and specialist operations. Short's SC7 Skyvan. Many are still flying and a lot are favoured as parachutist aircraft, others being used for photography, survey work and cargo. Its excellent stall performance makes it useful in remote places. 149 built from 1963 to 1986. Short 330, known at first as the SD330. It was simply a scaled up development of the Skyvan. This aircraft came out at the right time and it did very well in the American market as many carriers and their feeder companies ordered them. It also helped make good inroads for the future 360 sales. Some are still in service, but almost all are operating cargo services. Built from 1974 till 1992. Short Sherpa or C-23, as it was called in military service. At first it was called the 330 UTT. It was a military version of the 330. 60 aircraft went on to serve in American military forces. Even civilian short 360s were converted with new 330 rear ends to meet the demand. Some of these ex-American aircraft after the withdrawal are now in civilian service or with other government services abroad. 60 aircraft were built between 1984 and 1990 and conversions continued until 1997. Short 360. Once as common as muck in the UK and operating passenger cargo mail flights, the 360 was operated like the 330 by major carriers and small regional airlines. Now sadly none operate in Europe, and it would be nice if one could be preserved in the UK as such an important aircraft in British aviation. So in total, 140 short 330s and Sherpas were built, narrowly beaten by the 165 short 360s. The total combined number of Skyvans, 330s, Sherpas and 360s built comes to a total of 454, making it the most successful British turboprop design. In 1989, the sale of shorts to Bombardier was completed, and that was at the time a lot of airlines were looking to replace turboprops with the new up-and-coming shiny regional jets. So interest had dropped off with all the shorts turboprops. Shorts in the mid-80s also had moved on to other projects, including designing a regional jet and building the Tucano under license from Embraer. The new owners then decided to end production of the turboprop aircraft and move the company into components building and supplying. Right onto the shorts 450. During the 80s they started designing a new stretch version of the Short 360 and it was possibly going to be built in cooperation with Embraer. So here is an article from Air International, August 1985. Unveil Le Bourget was a further stretch in the family of Short's unpressurised regional airliners, the 44 to 49 seat Short's 450. Given a firm launch decision this summer, it could be flying a prototype late next year with customers delivering following on from late 1987. The Shorts 450, the designation reflecting the baseline 45 seat layout, is rather more than a simple three row stretch of the existing Shorts 360, although it does carry low technical risks. As currently envisaged, the Shorts 450 will feature a 9 foot 4 inch 2.84 meter fuselage stretched, a revised main gear arrangement in which snub wing mounted sponsons of the 360 will give place for elongated sponsons adhering to the corners of the box section fuselage. It will have an entirely new wing centre section with broader root cord and tapered on both leading and trailing edges, a heightened vertical tail surface and 1550 SHP category engines driving six bladed propellers. The choice of power plant still has to be made at the time of closing for press, when shorts are evaluating the late series PT6A, the PW100, the TPE331 and the CT7. So even today the 450 looks good on paper, and it makes you wonder if they had produced it, would it have sold well? So could it have been the ultimate shed? Was it a missed opportunity? The Shorts aircraft were the twinner of the next size up regional and cargo market, 
I think there is a good market today for an uncomplicated, robust, with low operating cost aircraft, and that's amongst all these high-tech, expensive aircraft covering these services today. I could see it also doing very well in remote locations and the small cargo package areas. In June 2019, Viking Aircraft acquired the type certificates of the Skyvan, the 330, the Sherpa 360 from Bombardier. With this accusation, Viking's customer service and product support team assumed responsibility for these fleets, providing technical and engineering support. And that's funny, as they restarted the uh, Twin Otter production. So Viking, if you're watching, how about the 450? I hope you enjoyed this episode about this interesting aircraft that sadly never was. And not a lot of stuff has been published about the 450. So please leave a comment about what your view is. Please like, subscribe or share, as that is appreciated. Anyway, long live the sheds.